Hello everyone, this is Tushar Bhutani with Remax Excellence. Hi everyone, this is Sid. I'm a mortgage specialist with Mortgage Alliance. We have uh, Ashley over a Zoom conference call today uh, from, um, she's a president and co-founder of uh, Yeg Garden Suites and we will be talking in detail about uh, Garden Suites. Now, of course, a lot of you out there might be wondering what exactly is Garden Suites. So that's exactly what we'll be covering in today's video. And we'll be talking about basic guidelines, requirements, approx costs to build uh, a Garden Suite. And of course, pros and cons, right? What if you already have a suite in the basement? Can you also put a Garden Suite above the garage at the same time? Uh, and of course, what is the approx rent value in terms of what you can really get from that investment that you're putting in, right? So we'll talk more about uh, that stuff with Ashley very shortly. Perfect, I'm excited. Let's learn about Garden Suite now. Perfect. Awesome. Uh, well, first off, thank you so much for having me. Uh, it's a pleasure to join you today. So yeah, I'll start by talking uh, a little bit about, you know, what is, what's Yay Garden Suites? Who are we, what do we do? Uh, so so Yay Garden Suites is a nonprofit organization. And we're really an education and advocacy based group. So whenever a homeowner is looking to build a garden suite, it can be a confusing process and it can be challenging to, to connect with builders and industry professionals that know what they're doing. So our organization kind of, it acts as a hub of information for those people. So we hold educational workshops and webinars. Uh, in in non-COVID times, we hold tours as well so that people can see some of these garden suites live. And we do a decent amount of advocacy as well. So, you know, working with the city of Edmonton to, to get the rules and regulations to a point where it's actually easy for people to build what they want right in their own backyards. Right. And uh, in terms of, you know, what, what is a garden suite? Just so we're all on the same ground here. Right, uh, yeah, so uh, some people may be familiar with the term garage suite. Some people may know laneway home or granny flat. They go by a bunch of different names. But really what we're talking about is a, a house in your backyard. Okay, so that's, that's a garden suite. It's a, a detached house in your backyard, typically used as a rental unit. Um, but uh, the other big demographic that builds garden suites is multi-generational families. So, you know, being able to house uh, your aging parent or maybe your university-aged children close by, but they still have their own separate space. So they're not too close. Right, right. So similar yeah. to the option, right? Of course, uh, with the exception that it's actually in the back instead of being in the same dwelling. Right, I guess, I guess no shared walls or... Yeah. Uh, or yeah, exactly. Um, and that's that's one of the sort of nice features about garden suites compared to something like a secondary suite or basement is it is completely independent. Um, from a rental perspective, we do find that they're, they're kind of more of a luxury good uh, because of that independence. It is basically a detached house um, and it, it gives you a really nice feel. You're above ground. So that brings a question to me. Uh, is that like, do we have a separate legal address for that legal suite or... or, or, or uh, garage suite or, or how does it work? Yeah, so typically they'll just tag on a, a G, like a letter G to the, the main address so you, that you can get your, your mail delivered. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. And what about the mechanical stuff? Of course, being the separate unit, uh, they might have their own furnace, their own hot water tank and stuff. So where does it all fit? Yeah, uh, so good question. And I guess I should address the size of garden suites because there's actually a lot of variability. Um, a lot of people assume that garden suites are the same as tiny homes and that's not the case. Uh, so garden suites can actually be up to 1400 square feet now. Plus you can have a basement uh, that doesn't count towards that square footage. So they, they're quite sizable. Um, so in essence, we're building a house, um, often mechanical is in, in the same place, either under the stairs. If the suite does have a basement, it'll often just go in a utility room. Oh, I see. Okay. I see. Just like any house, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Nice, so, and, we can, and you, did you say we can go up to 1400 square feet? That's correct. What's the smallest size that you've ever? Um, I mean, the smallest I've seen is around, I think, 350 square feet. Uh, but as of a couple of months ago, the city actually has allowed tiny home garden suites. So um, the minimum size requirements have been removed. So you can basically have as small as you want, uh, as long as it's on a permanent foundation. It, it can't be mobile, uh, so it can't have wheels. Okay. Have you seen people building this to, to have their office space? Uh, like, is, is the city allowing uh, us to do that? Yeah, totally. Um, so as I mentioned, the top two reasons are rental purposes or, you know, housing family or building for themselves. So oftentimes people, you know, they're living in a, a bungalow 
in an older neighborhood. So they can kind of upgrade by building a suite in their backyard and then they'll rent out the front house. Mm -hmm. uh, but then, as you mentioned, there is another group of people who just want extra space. So they're, they're using it as an office, uh, a music studio, pottery studio. We've seen a bunch of things. Mm, nice. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And actually, how do you compare this uh, in terms of building a suite in the basement? What are we looking at for cost difference? I have uh, heard a lot of stories kind of about the market, right? When people talk about no garden suite might be really expensive. So yeah. it might get you about the same rental. Uh, if you were to do a basement suite, still get, gets you about the same kind of 1000 to 1500 depending on, of course, what location, whereabouts you are, what kind of a setup you have, right, in the suite. So what kind of cost are we looking at between the two? For sure. Um, so, you know, basement suites, typically you're looking at, you know, sixty to $8,000. Um, garden suites usually start at around $170,000. And obviously, you know, depending on how luxury you go, it can go up from there, depending on size as well. Uh, in terms of the rentability, uh, as I mentioned, they, they do typically function as a bit more of a luxury. So in terms of the rental rates for garden suites, uh, we, we usually see, you know, 1500, 1600. Um, and obviously that's dependent on neighborhood, but most garden suites are being built in, in pretty nice neighborhoods, you know, your West Mounts, Richie's, uh, Belgravia near the university, those types of areas. And the fact that it's also about great. Right. Yes. Like a basement suite, we can't really compare the two. Yeah. Because yeah. Basement, of course, below grade. And that's yeah. not above grade living, right? Left, uh, right. In any sense. Uh, exactly. Yeah, I agree with you, Ashley, on that part. Luxury home, more of a above grade living as well, right? So, yeah. What about the noise factor? Of course, like knowing when you build this above the garage, how does it really affect if you've got like a one bedroom setup upstairs and if you were to open the garage door? Will it really affect people kind of living in there? Honestly, um, We've spoken with hundreds of garden suite owners at this point, and nobody says anything about uh, noise disturbances or sound. Right. Um, usually, it's actually people find it kind of quiet because it's in you know it's it's back from the front street. Mm -hmm. uh, it's in the lane, which is less heavily trafficked, um, and you are since you are elevated, uh, you're kind of you're kind of away from a lot of the uh, you know hustle and bustle. Right. What about parking issues? Like, have you have you heard from people talking about it? Um, no. So with garden suites, you know, usually people do incorporate uh, either one stall, sometimes two stalls, uh, or a parking pad when they're building their suite in order to accommodate their parking needs. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if you, you folks are familiar with the changes coming, uh, hopefully on the 23rd, so next week, around uh, getting rid of parking minimums in Edmonton. Oh, really? So. Yeah. Um, so as an organization, we're really excited for that, actually. Mm -hmm. So um, we've run into a lot of garden suite owners who, you know, they, they want to build a suite. Maybe they live next to transit or they don't even own a car or maybe they're intending to rent to university students. So that that market market segment doesn't need garage space. Um, so in the past, with these uh, parking minimums, they've been forced to you know, spend money on building a garage instead of rentable living space. Um, so once this change happens, it's really going to open the door so that homeowners can build, you know, however much parking they need, whether that's, you know, one stall or four or five, uh, it gives them more flexibility. Perfect. perfect. So um, now coming back to this, this parking question, does it mean we can only build garden suites on houses that have lanes in the back or, or you know, with detached garages and stuff? Or, or can we no. Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, it used to be that you could only build garden suites on corner lots in Edmonton. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and then it was, you could build them uh, in, in certain areas of town, certain zoning. Right now, it's opened up to the point where you can have a garden suite basically on every residential lot in the city. Um, and it does not matter if you have a laneway. So even if you don't have a lane, you can still build a suite. Uh, there's just some restrictions around height. So if there's no lane, you are limited to a single story as opposed to two. I see. Okay. And actually, what about the basic guidelines and requirements that one needs to have in place in order to start constructing a, a garden suite? Like, of course, with basement suite, uh, there's a lot more awareness out in the market now in terms of what the basic rules are from City of mm -hmm. So What kind of uh, guidelines do we have in City of Yeah. So, I mean, there's, um, there is a garden suite bylaw. 
Uh, the city has some really great resources. There's a how-to guide that kind of lays out, um, you know, how big you can build, what your setbacks are, uh, the height requirements, things like that. Uh, but garden suites at this point are a permitted use as opposed to discretionary. So they used to be discretionary uh, where your neighbors would be notified and there could have been an appeal process. It was a lot more uncertain. But now that it's a permitted use, if you are within the rules and regulations, uh, it's, it's your right to be able to build one. And uh, can people build a garden suite above their existing garage or is that something? So we get this question a lot, um, <laughs> like a lot, a lot. People will have kind of their 1950s or 60s garage out back and they just want to, you know, be able to add a suite above it. And I would say... Like 99% of the time, um, you do have to tear down the existing garage and build new just from a structural perspective. You know, this is a house you're building. Uh, the, the, even the foundation differences between um, just a slab for a garage versus versus a house. Uh, there's, there's major changes that need to happen. Okay, right, right. And would you be able to club it with a basement suite as well? Uh, say, for example, if you've got primary residence upstairs, uh, one has like a suite in the basement, would you be able to add a third dwelling in the same property lot? I have heard about it a little bit in the past where uh, they were talking about that it has been allowed now, but again, I don't have the verified information, right? If that's actually. Yeah, that is true. Uh, so we were. Uh... We were very pushy about that change, actually. We, we really wanted that to happen. So um, on RF1, RF2, and RF3 zone properties, you can now have both a basement suite in the main house and a garden suite out back. So that, that really increased, um, you know, from an investor perspective, people who are looking to do it for, for that reason. Now you have, you know, multiple rental suites on one lot and financially it becomes much more viable. Great, man. That's a big thing, yeah. Especially for investors, I'm sure they would be excited about yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Coming back to the cost, actually, like you said, the cost typically starts at about one hundred seventy thousand in order to yep. get um, a garden suite. Um, now, of course, for investors, like you know, when I'm out in the market, uh, people would ask me, "What kind of a return do I get from it?" So, how do I justify putting a one hundred seventy dollars into a home, building a suite? Uh, have you seen in the past, because of course you've built those a lot, have you seen a um, value of property going up by a certain value in terms of uh, getting, like, say, for example, if um, uh, maybe an infill location, let's just take a house that was built and there was a garage in the back which was taken down and now the owner felt fine, you know, if I have to rebuild the garage, might as well build a suite with the garage on the bottom. Now, would that really help him in terms of getting more value for his house, especially when he's put all that money into it? Yeah, so there's there's kind of two parts to this question. Um, so I'll address the the value part first. Um, so at this point, garden suites are still so new that there's really a lack of comparables. Uh, so when we're trying to decide, you know, okay, when this house sells, how is is the full value of the garden suite going to be reflected in that price? Um, so we we don't fully know yet. Like, I think at this point, there's been maybe like three or four properties with garden suites that have sold in Edmonton and all in different locations. Um, so I, I don't have a good answer on that. Uh, when, we, when we have spoken with the individuals who are doing this for investment purposes and um, a number of realtors, actually, they're realtors and garden suite investors. And when we talk to them, they do seem to think that it's worth it uh, in a, in a long term play. So nobody, nobody is getting into this and buying a property, building garden suite and flipping it and then selling like that. That doesn't make sense. Um, but if you're in this for the long term and you're able to cash flow that suite, that's when it starts to make a lot of sense. Yeah, no, I completely agree with her. Like there isn't much out there right now for me to even compare because uh, I mean, you're right. Uh, there isn't enough uh, comps out there for us to be able to figure out exactly if it will really affect the value or not. Right. Yeah. Yeah, no, long-term is the key, I guess. Right. You have to just kind of put that money into your property and just kind of sit and wait, right? You just can't expect a return to be like right away in a matter of years. Yeah, um, and I think I would also add um, one thing that you brought up that's pretty important is you have to consider the incremental cost of adding a suite because if you're, if you're going to be replacing your garage anyways, you know, remove $25,000 from the cost of the suite because you'd be doing that regardless. Um, so that's another thing to consider if you're, you know, looking at your budget and trying to do one for a suite. Right, right. Um, now, in terms of where we can build these garden suites, like is there certain communities that, that the city is allowing right now or, it, or, or we can build it basically anywhere in Edmonton? 
you can build basically anywhere. Um, you can build in, you know, newer suburban areas. You can build in our, our mature neighborhoods. Uh, like I said, almost every residential lot um, is is suitable for a garden suite under the current bylaws. Right. And would the would, would neighbors have any problem with it? Like, have you seen neighbors saying no to it? So interestingly enough, um, we don't see a lot of pushback from neighbors when it comes to garden suites. Uh, you know, I, I work with, you know, a lot of infill developers and very familiar with the infill community, uh, not just garden suites. And uh, if you're seeing kind of higher density developments, that's when you start to see a bit more neighborhood pushback. But I think something that's unique about garden suites, everyone can kind of relate to them. Um, it's a small scale development. They can imagine building one themselves. They can imagine maybe housing their mother in one or grandmother or something like that. Uh, so there's, yeah, there's definitely less pushback than, um, than other forms. Hmm, I see. And maybe since I've got a question, maybe you can answer on this as well. Uh, what about financing options? So with the garden suites, of course, like, you know, it's tough to have cash sitting around or right. able to build, um, a garden suite. Right. Are banks open to providing loans? and or some kind of a credit option out there for buyers? Well, when, when I look at it from financing aspect, I think it's more on the refinancing side where the banks will probably be interested because we don't mm -hmm. really know if it's going to add value to the property at all or not. Yeah, exactly. But That's actually, right. maybe you, I don't know if you've, if you've had this question before and what, what are your thoughts? Yeah. Yeah, so um, there's kind of, you know, three main options that people will typically pursue. Uh, the first one's cash, which no one really uses that. I think I've met maybe one or two people that have, you know, paid for their suite in cash, which is yeah. impressive. Um, <laughs> the other option is basically um, just a refinance, pretty typical. And the other would be uh, something called a purchase, or sorry, um, an as is as complete mortgage. Mm -hmm. So that's where the bank would basically, um, you'd be able to access 80% of the equity of your main home and then 80% of the pre-appraised value of the suite. So once you have your suite plans done, you'd be able to um, show your mortgage specialist, they would get those appraised, and then uh, there's the potential to get up to 80% of that as well. Oh, that's nice, okay. That's a thing to know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess people can, can show it as a rental suite and, and use the rental income and probably go to 80% financing, it's just like they go on any rental property, I guess. more credit option, for sure. Yeah, well, I mean, we, we do find issues um, like most lenders, they don't count the actual uh, rental potential of the suite because it's not built yet. Right. So uh, typically banks will only consider rental income once it's actually like physically there. Uh, so that's that's one complexity that we find with garden suites. Um, so it, it can be a little bit difficult to get financing, but if you, if you speak with the right people, um, it's fairly straightforward. So I think that gives me some homework to work on. Yeah, of course. <laughs> How many time to build, provided that you've got all the permits and the drawings are kind of good to go. So from that day, once you start constructing, what's the lead time you're looking at? Yeah, so, um, you know, once you have your drawings, uh, permits usually take one to three months, really depends. Uh, and then, you know, once you break ground, depending on which builder you go with, we've seen anywhere from, you know, four to eight months. That's, that's pretty typical for a suite build. Right, so that's almost the same time as what uh, really takes to build a house altogether, right? Yeah. Right. yeah. So that, that's the same thing, even if you were to build uh, a garage with a garden suite on top? Like, yep, that's okay. correct. Um, I guess so. There are some players that are doing modular uh, or container type okay. builds. Mm -hmm. uh, I know the timeline can be a little bit quicker with, with those types of technologies, mm -hmm. but, you know, still the four or five month mark, um, that's pretty typical for a suite, for a, for a simple suite where it's sort of two car garage and then living space above. Yeah, it's a big project, right? So yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, and I mean, cause yeah, like one of the big uh, expenses, but also time considerations is, you know, you have to have full servicing and utilities to this suite. So, mm -hmm. you know, sewer and water and electrical, um, more often than not, you actually have to upgrade the, the entire sewer line um, and water line to the house so that it can account for that extra capacity. Mm, sure. And another question for you, Ashley. So I've seen a builder in Southwest. Um, uh, they actually had a garden suite. Uh, I went and kind of looked at it. Uh, very impressive, uh, you know, looking at what kind of stuff they've done. 
they also had, um, so, so the middle portion where the back here is, they've actually connected that uh, middle part with the garage and then of course mm -hmm. the home as well. So that, so that has left some space as a side yard. So of course you're not losing backyard as well. You've got uh, some side yard option and then you've got more of a mudroom galley right between the garage and the home. Uh, so is that something common that you will see a lot more on the market right now? People when they're building those? So I'm just trying to, let's make sure we're on the same page. So are you basically talking about um, kind of a breezeway that connects the mm -hmm. house to the suite? That's right. right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So um, there's an intricacy around that. So that's actually technically not a garden suite. So that would technically be considered a secondary suite because mm -hmm. it is attached to the primary dwelling. Oh, I okay. see. Yeah. So yeah, even though it even though it kind of looks and functions as a suite, um, yeah. if there is that breezeway connection, it is permitted and classified as a secondary suite. And I yep. think that's it's an interesting thing to consider because you know everyone thinks that a secondary suite has to be in a basement, and mm -hmm. that's not the case, right? Like you can have a secondary suite just like attached to the side of your house um, mm -hmm. or attached via breezeway. Um, so there's lots of creativity around that. So what you're saying is that the garden suite has to be a detached dwelling, pretty much away yes. from the primary residence, just away, yep. and no kind of breezeway or anything attached to it, right? Yeah, that's correct. There's a difference between a garden suite and also a suite that can be built above the garage, right? You're so right. Yeah. interesting. So that's some learning from you. Know, you have got a lot of information here. Like, yeah, you know, like that's good. Uh, I mean, yeah, we I, need I to no be able to get <laughs> on to our clients, right? So right. this is great. But, thanks, Ashley. Uh, yeah, thanks, Ashley. Uh, all I was trying to say here was, I'm sure our viewers are going to have a lot more questions than than what we have asked you here. Uh, for sure. And so if they want to get in touch with you, what is the best way for them to get in touch with you? Yeah, so folks can reach out through our website, uh, yeggardensuites.ca, and that's just one G, so Y-E-G. A R D E N sweets. Um, and uh, yeah, just feel, fill out our contact form. The, the emails go directly to my inbox. That's probably the easiest way. Sounds good. Perfect. Thanks for, uh, thanks for taking time out and doing this for us, Ashley. Really appreciate awesome. it. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. We learned a lot. Yes, yeah, sure. Excellent. You. Uh, Wonderful. You take care. Okay. Thanks so much. Bye. -bye.